Hi guys, I happen to be up at this hour. <laughs> I kind of slept during the day, so I'm kind of up at a weird hour. And I have basically nothing to do, <laughs> you know. I've been scrubbing the bottom of my pots, trying to get the dirt to burn off the skillet. I ordered something where you scrub it and it gets everything out. And so I use a little vinegar and lemon juice and I put a little soap. One of them, the newest one, came clean, silver like new. But the old pot, it's so burnt under the bottom, it won't, it won't get it all out. But I try. I want my pots clean because my sister bought me that. And I treasure anything that I can get, you know. It's hard to get a nice set of pots and pans. I love to cook, so I have to keep my pots and pans working properly. Um, and that's another topic about keeping things working. Keep your body working. Keep your pots and pans working. Keep your mind working. Keep things working that you need, that you depend on, okay? All right? Keep your loved ones working, the ones that you love. Let them call you and let them express whatever's wrong, you know. Everybody need to express. Everybody need to lament. Everybody need to cry. Everyone needs to laugh. We all need joy. We all need everything. Sorrow and sadness is all a part of living. So if you have people that need to share, listen. Listen. I mean, that's your sacrifice. Listen. Because one day they may listen to you. Okay? Got a little green tea and lemon. On my 12-hour fast. All right, so we're yet in the book of Genesis, guys. We're still in Genesis. Um, I think I did 27 today about Jacob, how he had the dream where the angels were ascending and descending. And he said, right where I lay my head is where I'm going to serve the Lord. He said, I'm going to build my altar right here. Okay. So that's Jacob. His stolen blessing, right? Now, Esau was actually the firstborn. So he's remorseful now. So let's start and uh, get on with chapter 28. Just one second. Let me get a position for the, this thing here. Hold on a second, guys. You want to get everything right. Okay. So we're reading uh, here in Genesis. Esau unveiling, unveiling remorse. He's remorseful. Okay. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly uh, bitter cry. <gasps> Wait a minute. Let me see if this is the right one. Okay, let's go on and read this because I believe we stopped off at verse. Let's see the stolen, but yeah, we read 27. So let's just go to 28. Genesis 28, we'll pick up here. Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padam Aram. I think we read this too. Hold on, let's see. Jacob's year at Haran, the journey. People of the East. Oh, I don't know where I stopped at today. Hold on. Okay, we're going to start here on, on 29. Jacob's years at Haran, Haran. Then Jacob went on his journey 
and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flock of sheep lying by it. For out of the well they watered the flock. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto my brethren, Whence be ye? And they said, of, Har of Haran are we. They came from Haran. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahar? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together, water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me or not? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of elder was Leah, and the name of younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve the seven years to Rachel, the younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. So he worked the land. He didn't have the money to pay, how you have to pay for the bride wages. So instead of him paying for a wife, you know, coming in with the money, he said, I'll work it off in seven years, and then I'll get the wife that I need. So he worked the land and helped to do whatever they needed for the flocks and the herds and all of that to earn the right to have her as a wife. And so Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. So after he worked the seven years, he said, Now this is my, my virgin wife. It's time for me to go in and make love to her and be with her as one. And so they prepared a feast to celebrate because they figure, you know, she's very young. She's going to end up with a baby. She's a virgin. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zelpiah, his maid or a handmaid. So... <clears throat> Uh, um, a maid would always be given with the daughter to help her, you know, with everything she would need. 
And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and said to Laban, What is thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the, the service what thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave, he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So he served another seven years. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, um, Beliah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel and loved also Rachel more than Leah and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So he wanted really Rachel. He didn't want Leah, but he made Leah able to bear a child, not Rachel. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon, Simon, Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have, I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left and left bearing. Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's do some explaining. <clears throat> we want to understand what we read, right? 29, it says right here, 16 through 17, the verse introduced Laban's other daughter, Leah. Leah was the oldest, and the oldest should be taken before the youngest, but he wanted the youngest. He didn't want the oldest. So Leah means cow. Rachel means ewa, lamb. There is some mystery regarding Leah's eyes. A few English translations understand Leah's eyes to be her best quality. So they translate the Hebrew word as tender, that she had tender eyes or something similar. However, most scholars suggested that Leah's eyes are, are detriments in some ways. The point seems to be that she does not measure up to her beautiful sister. She doesn't measure up to her sister. How could Jacob marry the, the wrong woman? According to the Western customs, no man could be fooled in this way. The most likely explanation is that when Laban brings his daughter Leah to Jacob, it is dark and she is veiled from head to toe. It seems that the wedding lease host the wedding feast hosted by Laban is an international ploy to dull Jacob's senses with wine. Okay, so somehow he ended up with Leah instead of Rachel. Leah was covered and they were drinking wine and all that. So Laban's explanation that he must see his firstborn daughter Mary first seems ironically appropriate in this story. Jacob had dishonored the principle of the firstborn by cheating his brother out of the birthright. Remember, he cheated his brother out of his birthright with his father because he pretended that he was Esau when his father was dying to get his birthright. This is what he's doing. So, since he cheated his father's birthright and the blessing now God forces him to honor the principle he had violated 
by marrying Leah first, which was the oldest daughter. So he has to honor that principle. The deceiver is deceived. God trains Jacob by allowing him to meet his own sins in someone else. Amen. He meets his own sins. The only thing that he did to cheat his brother is being done to him with his wife. He's being tricked to take the first wife and not the one he worked so hard to get. Now, Jacob receives Rachel seven days after he consummated his marriage to Leah. And Jacob marries two women in eight days. He marries two women in eight days. So, the first one he married was Leah, remember. Now, when Leah is referred to as hated, this does not mean that hold on my light is so low in my eyes hold on let me get the light on here this does not mean that leah becoming a mother ensures that her importance will increase in jacob's estimation as well as in the estimation of her family and society in general Although her husband loves her, Rachel does not consider her life worth living without children. So Jacob responds in anger. In fact, the word translated anger here is quite graphic. It means to breathe hard to, uh, you know what anger means, guys. So Jacob's anger is heated as he, in essence, says Rachel childishness is not his fault. So Rachel's solution is an ancient custom that allows an infertile woman to offer her female servant as a wife. Then claim the child of this union as her own. This was culturally accepted and completely legal. And in fact, it was a solution that had been in employed by Abraham and Sarah, Jacob's grandparents. Remember, they did the same thing. They did the same thing. Okay. And so, anyway, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So he was tricked into taking the other wife, Leah, and he had a bunch of children there with Leah. Now, at what it says down here in uh, 30, 22, and 24, it says here, and Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry now will my husband dwell with me she had money because i have borne him six sons and she called his name she has six sons you know a son is strength when you have your son she has six sons afterward she bear a daughter and called her name dinah and god remembered rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. He opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God have taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, 
Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me, for it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when I shall and now shall I provide for my own house also. So he's saying to Laban, I have been here, I have done everything you said, I've increased your land and your cattle your cattle, and he said it's time for me to go. He said, I have two wives and I have children, and he said, I just want to go away from here and, and develop my own stuff. Now it says, for if we, it for it was little which thou hadst before. Okay, so we read that. He said, now you are blessed. And, um, and then he says, here in verse 30, he says, and now when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among goats. And of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goat, brown among the sheep, shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I will, it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day he goats that were ring straked and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and every one that had that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hand of his sons and he sat three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks and Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and peeled white starks in them and made the white appear which was in the rods and he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive <coughs> when they came to drink and when the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring, ring straight, speckled and spotted, and Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flock by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, once forth, the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feeble were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants, and man servants, and camels, and asses. So he set the, the cattle up so that they would produce offspring. Okay, let's understand something here. Oh, hold on, let's see here. After the birth of Joseph, Jacob asked to be released from Laban's authority. Unlike today, Jacob could not simply pack his bags and leave. The authority structure in this Eastern extended family is far more complex and restrictive as it is still today. It's far more restrictive. In some Eastern cultures, there is a shared ownership of Jacob wives and children. To leave 
without his father-in-law's permission and blessing could lead to outright war within the family clan. So it was generally believed that by placing visuals before the animals as they were mating, it was possible to influence the appearance of their offspring. Okay. So both Laban and his sons are unhappy about Jacob growing herds. Essentially, Laban's sons are accusing Jacob of stealing their inheritance. From their perspective, it is disappearing right before their eyes. As a result, they become envious and bitter toward Jacob. Laban also treats Jacob differently. The last recorded revelation that Jacob received from God was 20 years earlier. It, was, it has been 20 years. While he was still in the land of promise, God had promised to bring Jacob back to the land. Now, at last, God gives Jacob the divine directive to return back to the land, back to the land he was originally in. So Rachel and Leah agree with Jacob's assessment. After all, the father, Laban, had stolen their inheritance, treated them like uh, foreigners, and sold them and used up the money uh, from their dowry. Okay, guys, my I'm already at 26 minutes, but let's just go hot on. I'm going to try to get to the end of what I can. So Rachel steals her father's household idols while he is busy. So sometimes they have things like photos, pictures, uh, whatnots. They call those idols, things that sit around the house, that beautify the house. They call, they call those idols. So Rachel steal all of those things, pictures on the walls, things like that. Okay, so she takes all of those things, the idols, the small figurines, and uh, use, they, they were used in divination and to bring good luck, bring good luck. Why does she steal them? Not no, no exact reason is given, but it may have been simply for protection and good fortune, which would which would have revealed some attachment to the religion of her father. She was attached to the father's religion, what he believed in. So she's taking some of those things for her own household. Um the Hebrew narrative style often includes a summary statement of this whole passage followed by a more detailed report. Okay, verse 22 provides a summary of 23. It is when Jacob is alone, having done everything he could to secure his own safety, that God comes to him. God has arranged the circumstances so that he could get Jacob alone at a moment when he felt completely helpless. Amen. And isn't that so? The Lord often get us completely alone when we feel completely helpless. And so <laughs> this is when the Lord came to him when he was completely, he, he couldn't figure out nothing else to do. You know, he'd done all he could. So why does the man touch Jacob's thigh because the thigh is the largest and strongest muscle connection of the body. He is deliberately crippling Jacob at the point of his greatest strength. Now the new Jacob receives Israel means either God strives or he who strives with God. If the latter interpretation is the one intended by the wrestler who blesses Jacob, then the name fits well with Jacob's character as one who throughout his life struggles with God. 
The name given to this place, Penel, means the face of God. Jacob has every reason to believe that 20 years has not diminished Esau's anger as he sees Esau's marching toward him with 400 men by going ahead of his family to meet Esau. Jacob shows that he has overcome the fear that had formerly dominated the old Jacob. He also shows valor in protecting his family. Bowing to the ground before Esau demonstrates humility. This is ancient court, court protocol for approaching a lord or king. So he bowed to Esau, his brother, when he saw him coming with all the men, you know, letting him know he was honoring him. And so Jacob had become in a different sort of a uh, place than where he was when he stole the blessing. And I really believe this is because he ended up getting a, a dupe put on him with having to take Leah instead of Rachel. And then he ends up with two wives. He had to work even more time to get Rachel. So, you know, they put one over on him and he put one over on Esau. So now when Esau came, you know, I believe he kind of understood what he did was wrong. You know, so he was in a different place when he met his brother. So the fact that Esau refuses Jacob's herd as gifts is significant. Esau is not the taker that Jacob has been. So he didn't want to take the gifts. And Jacob's comparison of seeing Esau to seeing God's face may seem like flattery or overstatement. It could also have been recognition on Jacob's part of God's character in the life of his brother. Amen. Recognition that he recognized that God's character is in Esau. That's what he was trying to He was trying to do some, a nice gesture when he came back into him, when he met him again, you know. Okay, guys, we're just going to take a quick break so I can review some things, and I'll get back with you in a minute.